about what we are doing and why go ahead and check that out um, because it will you will see very quickly that we are not um, professionals in the pronunciation department yes so bear with us bear with us as we go through this but we are starting with Esau's descendants in chapter 36 of Genesis in the NIV version I guess that's what the B stands for nice. um, this is the account of the family line of Esau that is Edom Esau took his wives from the women of Canaan, Ada, daughter of Elon the Hittite, and Olabama, is that right? Olabama, Oho, Olabama, <laughs> daughter of Ana, granddaughter of Zibion the Hivite, also Basemath, daughter of Ishmael, and sister of Nebio. We should also say that we haven't, uh, pre-read these to practice if you can't tell. I mean, we've read them before, but you know. Ada bore Eliphaz to Esau, Basemath bore Reuel, and Oholabama bore <laughs> Jeush, Shalom, and Korah. These were the sons of Esau who were born to him in Canaan. Esau took wives and sons and daughters and all the members of his household, as well as his livestock and other animals and all the goods he acquired in Canaan, and moved to a land some distance from his brother Jacob. Their possessions were too great for them to remain together. The land they were staying could not support them both because of their livestock. So Esau, that is Edom, settled in the hill country of Seir. This is the account of his family line of Esau, the father of the Edomites, in the hill country of Seir. These are the names of Esau's sons. Eliphaz, son of Esau's wife Ada, and Raul, the son of Esau's wife Basemath. The sons of Elphaz, Taman, Omar, Zepho, Gatam, Hanaz, Esau's sons, Elphaz also had a concubine named Timna, who bore him Amalek. These, not Aflac, Amalek. These were sons, <laughs> grandsons of Esau's wife Ada, the sons of Raul. Nahath, Zerah, Shemath, Mizah, these were the grandsons of Esau's wife, Basemath, the sons of Esau's wife, Aholabama, daughter of Ana, and granddaughter of Zibion, whom she bore to Esau, Jush, Jalam, and Korah. <laughs> there were chiefs among Esau's descendants, the sons of Elphaz, the firstborn of Esau, chiefs Timon, Timon, Omar, Zepho, Kenes, Korah, Getam, Tamil. These were the chief descendants uh, from Elphaz of Edom. They were the grandsons of Ada, the sons of Esau's son, the sons of Esau's sons, Raul, Chief Nahath, Zerha, Shema, and Mizah. They were the chief descendants from Raul in Edom. They were grandsons of Esau's wife, Basemath, the sons of Esau's wife, Aholabama. Chiefs, Jush, Jalam, and Korah. These were the chief descendants of Esau's wife, Oholabama, Ol daughter, <laughs> daughter of Ada. These were the sons of Esau, that is Edom, and these were their chiefs. These were the sons of Seir, the Horite, who were living in the region. Lotan, Shobal, Zibia, Ana, Dishon, Ezer, and Dishon. These sons of Edom were Horite chiefs, the sons of Lotan, Hori, Homam, Timna, it was Lotan's sister, the sons of Shobal, Alvin, Manahath, Ebal, Shifo, and Onam. Hi, Umar, they're so cute. The sons of Zibion, Aha, Ana, this is Ana, who discovered the hot springs in the desert while she was grazing the doggies of her father, Zibion. What a uh, fun little fact in there. That was Ana. That Ana. Got it. The factoid. They wanted it to be remembered. She discovered hot springs. Or he. He discovered yep. hot springs. The children of Ana, Dishon, and Aholabama, daughter of Ana. The sons of Dishon, Himda, Ishban, 
Ithran, and Kieran, the sons of Ezer, Bilhan, Zaban, Achan, <laughs> the sons of Dishan, Uz, and Aaron. These were the Horite chiefs, Lotan, Jobal, Zibion, Ada, Dishon, Ezer, and Dishan. These were the Horite chiefs according to their uh, divisions in the land of Sir. We're almost there! Oof. These were the kings who reigned in Edom before any Israelite king reigned. Bela, son of Beor, became king of Edom. His city was named Dinhabah. When Bela died, Jobab, son of Zer, from Bozrah, succeeded him as king. When Jobab died, Hushim, Hashem, from the land of Temanites, succeeded him as king. When Hashem died, Hadad, son of Bedad, who defeated Midian in the country of Moab, succeeded him as king. His city was named Abed. When Hadad died, Smala, Smala, Samla, Samla, from Mazrika, succeeded him as king. When Samla died, Shoal from Rohobo on the river succeeded him as king. When Shoal died, Balhanan, son of Akbor, succeeded him as king. When Balal Hanan, son of Akor, died, Hadad succeeded him as king. His city was named Pala, and his wife's name was <laughs> Mahad. <laughs> what? We do great. His wife's name was Mahet Mahetabel, daughter of Madred, the daughter of Mezahab. Terrible, they split up between two lines there. These were the chief descendants of Esau by name, according to their clan and region. Timna, Alba, Jehad, Aholabama, Elah, Pinan, <laughs> Tiras, Tamron, Mibzar, Megdil, and Aram. These were the chiefs of Edom, according to their settlements and the land they occupied. This is the family line of Esau, the fathers of the Edomites. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Nice. <laughs> well done. Thank you, thank you. A lot of names. I don't have as many names in chapter 37. Chapter 37! Puppy. This is about Joseph being sold into slavery. Uh, Jacob lived in the land where his father had stayed, the land of Canaan. This is the account of Jacob's family line. Joseph, a young man of 17, was tending the flocks with his brothers, the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. And he brought their father a bad report about them. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons, because he had been born to him in his old age, and he made an ornate robe for him. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him, and could not speak a kind word to him. Joseph had a dream, and when he told his brothers, they hated him all the more. He said to, he said to them, Listen to this dream I had. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field, when suddenly my sheep rose and stood upright, while your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. His brother said to him, Do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he said. And then he had another dream, and he told it to his brothers. Listen, he said, I had another dream, and this time the sun, the sun and moon and eleven stars were bowing down to me. Hold on. Yeah. Our puppy found his loud toy. Ah. There we go. <laughs> I had another dream, and this time the sun and moon and eleven stars were bowing down to me. When he told his father as well as his brothers, uh, his father rebuked him and said, What is this dream you had? Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down to the ground before you? His brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the matter in mind. Now his brothers had gone to graze their father's flocks near Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, As you know, your brothers are grazing the flocks near Shechem. Come! I'm going to send you to them. Very well, he replied. So he said So he said to him, Go and see if all is well with your brothers and with the flocks, and bring word back to me. Then he sent him off from the valley of Hebron. When Joseph arrived at Shechem, a man found him wandering around in the fields and asked him, What are you looking for? He replied, I'm looking for my brothers. Can you tell me where they are grazing their flocks? They have moved on from here, the man answered. I heard them say, Let's go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them near Dothan. But they saw him in the distance, and before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. 
Here comes that dreamer, they said to each other. Come now, let's kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns and say that a, a ferocious animal devoured him. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. When Reuben heard this, he tried to rescue him from their hands. Let's not take his life, they said. Or let's not take his life, he said. Don't shed any blood. Throw him into his into this cistern here in the wilderness, but don't lay a hand on him. Reuben said this to rescue him from them and take him back to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the ornate robe he was wearing, and they took him and threw him into the, cist into the cistern. The cistern was empty. There was no water in it. As they sat down to eat their meal, they looked up and saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead. Their camels were loaded with spices, balms, and myrrh, and they were on their way to take them down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, what, if we, uh, what will we gain if we kill our brother and cover up his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood. His brothers agreed. <laughs> So when the Midianite merchants came by, his brothers pulled Joseph up out of the cistern and sold him for 20 shekels of silver to the, Ishma to the Ishmaelites, who took him to Egypt. When Reuben returned to the cistern and saw that Joseph was not there, he tore his clothes. He went back to his brothers and said, The boy isn't there! Where can I turn now? When, then they got Joseph's robe, slaughtered a goat, and dipped the robe in the blood. They took the ornate, ornate robe back to their father and said, We found this. Examine it to see whether it is your son's robe. He recognized it and said, It is my son's robe. Some ferocious animal has devoured him. Joseph has surely been torn to pieces. Then Joseph tore his clothes, put on sackcloth, and mourned for, his sons, mourned for his son many days. All his sons and daughters came to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. No, he said, I will continue to mourn until I join my son in the grave. So his father wept for him. Meanwhile, the Midianites sold Joseph in Egypt to Potiphar, one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard. Chapter... Thirty-eight. Now, if you stop paying attention, start paying attention, because this is one of my favorite, most interesting chapters, in my opinion. No. Uh, Judah and Tamar. 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 At that time, Judah left his brothers and went down to stay with a man of Adullam named Hira. There, Judah met a, the daughter of a Canaanite man named Shua. <laughs> he married her and made love to her. She became pregnant and gave birth to a son who was named Ur. She conceived again and gave birth to a son named Onan. She gave birth to, a, to still another son and named him Shelah. It was at Kezib that she gave birth to him. Judah got a wife for Ur, his firstborn, and named her Tamar. But Ur, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord, so the Lord put him to death. When Judah said to Onan, Sleep with your brother's wife and fulfill your duty as her brother-in-law to raise up offspring for your brother. But Onan knew that the child would not be his. So whenever he slept with his brother's wife, he spilled his semen on the ground. This is not always my favorite story, by the way. <laughs> he spilled his semen on the ground um, to keep from providing offspring for his brother. What he did was wicked in the Lord's sight, so the Lord put him to death. Judah then said to his daughter-in-law Tamar, Live as a widow in your father's household until my son Sheila grows up. For he thought he may die too, just like his brothers. So Tamar went to live in her father's household. After a long time, Judah's wife, the daughter of Shua, died. When Judah had recovered from his grief, he went up to Timnah to, where, um, to the men who were shearing his sheep and his friend Hira, the Adulamite went with him. When Tamar was told, Your father-in-law is on his way to Timnah to share his sheep, she took off her widow's clothes, covered herself in a veil to disguise herself, and went down to the entrance of Enim, on, which, on the road to, which is on the road to Timnah. For she saw, um, though Sheila was now grown up, she had not been given to him as his wife. When Judah saw her, he thought she was a prostitute, for she had covered her face. Not realizing that she was his daughter-in-law, he went over to her by the roadside. Come, now let me sleep with you. And what will you give me to sleep with you, she asked. I will give you a young goat for my flock, he said. Will you give me something as a pledge until you send it, she asked. He said, what pledge should I give you? Your seal and its cord and the staff in your hand, she answered. So he gave them to her and he slept with her. 
and she became pregnant by him. After she left, she took off her veil and put on her widow's clothes again. Meanwhile, Judah sent the young goat by his friend, the Adulamite, in order to get his pledge back from the woman. But he did not find her. He asked the man who lived there, Where is the shrine prostitute who is beside the road at Enam? There hasn't been any shrine prostitute here, he, they said. So he went back to Judah and said, I didn't find her. Besides, the man who lived there said there hasn't been any shrine prostitute there or here. When Judah said, let her keep what she had, then Judah said, let her keep what she has or we will become a laughing stock. After all, I did send her the young goat, but you didn't find her. About three months later, Judah was told, your daughter-in-law Tamar is guilty of prostitution and as a result is now pregnant. Judah said, bring her out and let's have her burned to death. As she saw, as she was being brought out, she sent a message to her father-in-law. I am pregnant by the man who owns thee, she said. And she added, see if you recognize who seal in court and staff these are. Judah recognized them and said, she is more righteous than I, since I wouldn't give her my son, Shula. And he did not sleep with her again. When the time came for her to give birth, there was there were twin boys in her room. She gave. She was giving birth, and one of one of them put out his hand. So the midwife took a scarlet thread and tied it on his wrist. Well, this one came out first, but when he drew back his hand, his brother came out, and she said, "So this is how you have broken out." His name was Perez. His brother, who had the scarlet thread on his wrist, came out, and his name was Zira. Wild story. Wild. Wow. 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 Da, 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 da. All right. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt. Check back in with Joseph. Yeah, flashback. Flashback back and forth. Flashback and forth to Joseph. Potiphar, an Egyptian who was one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard, brought him from the Ishmael or bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him there. The Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered, and he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did, Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of his household and he entrusted to his care everything he owned. From the time he put him in charge of his household and all of that he owned, and of all that he owned, the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. The blessings of the Lord, the blessing of the Lord was on everything Potiphar had, both in the house and in the field. So Potiphar left everything he had in Joseph's care with Joseph in charge. He did not concern himself with anything with anything except the food he ate. Now Joseph was well built and handsome. And after a while, his master's wife took notice of Joseph and said, Come to bed with me. But he refused. With me in charge, he told her, My master does not concern himself with anything in the house. Everything he owns, he has entrusted to my care. No one is greater in this house than I am. My master has withheld nothing from me except you, because you are his wife. How then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? And though she spoke to Joseph day after day, he refused to go to bed with her or even be with her. One day he went into the house to attend to his duties, and none of the household servants was inside. She caught him by his cloak and said, Come to bed with me! But he left his cloak in her hand and ran out of the house. When she saw that he had left his cloak in her hand and had run out of the house, she called her household servants. Look, she said to them, this Hebrew has been brought to us to make sport of us. He came in here to sleep with me, but I screamed. When he heard me scream for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. She kept his cloak beside her until his master came home. Then she told him this story. That Hebrew slave you brought us came to make me to make sport of me. But as soon as I screamed for help, for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. When his master heard the story his wife told him, saying, This is how your slave treated me? He burned with anger. Joseph's master took him and put him in prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. But while Joseph was in the prison, the Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. So the warden put Joseph in charge of all those held in prison, and he was made responsible for all that was done there. The warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. Chapter 40. 40. 40. Can we read that one? <laughs> There you go. Oh, I got it. You got it. You got it, babe. The cupbearer and the baker. <laughs> so,
Some time later, the cupbearer and the baker of the king of Egypt offended their master, the king of, oh, master, the king of Egypt. Pharaoh was angry with his two officials, the chief cupbearer and the chief baker, and put them in custody in the house of the captain of the guard in the same prison where Joseph was confined. The captain of the guard assigned Joseph, assigned them to Joseph, and he attended them. After they had been in custody for some time, each of the two men, the cupbearer and the baker of the king of Egypt, who were being held in prison, had a dream the same night, and each dream had a meaning of its own. When Joseph came to them the next morning, he saw that they were dejected. So he asked Pharaoh's officials who were in custody with him in his master's house, Why do you look so sad today? We both had dreams, they answered, but there is no one to interpret them. But Joseph said to them, Do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me your dreams. So the chief cupbearer told Joseph his dream. He said to him, In my dream I saw a vine in front of me. On the vine there were three branches. As soon as it budded, it it blossomed, and its clusters ripened into grapes. Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes, squeezed them into Pharaoh's cup, and put the cup in his hand. This is what it means, Joseph said to him. The three branches are three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your position. You will put Pharaoh's cup in his hand, just as you used to when you were his cup bearer. But when all goes uh, but when all goes well with you, remember me and show me kindness. Mention me to Pharaoh and get me out of prison. I was forcibly carried off from the land of the Hebrews, and even here I have done nothing to deserve being put in a dungeon. When the chief baker saw Joseph had given a favorable interpretation, he said to Joseph, I too had a dream. Um, on my head there were three baskets of bread. In the top basket were all kinds of baked goods for Pharaoh, but the birds were eating them out of the basket on my head. This is what it means, Joseph said. The three baskets are three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift off your head and impale your body on a pole, and there birds will eat your flesh away. Now, the third day was Pharaoh's birthday. He gave a feast for all his officials. He lifted up the heads of the chief cupbearer and the chief baker in the presence of his official he, officials. He restored the chief cupbearer to his position so that... He once again put the cup into Pharaoh's hand, but he impaled the chief baker, just as Joseph had said to them in his interpretation. The chief cupbearer, however, did not remember Joseph. He forgot him. And that is all we are reading today. Thank you for reading chapters of Genesis 36 through 40. See ya in the next one.